Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna do 10 random items in your camera bag that could save your butt. So I know as photographers and videographers, a lot of times we're buying lenses, extra batteries, tripods, gimbals, drones, camera bags, microphones, all those kind of things. And there's a lot of items we don't even think to buy. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys 10 items that I personally carry on me that have saved my butt a few different times. Right now you're watching Mike and Hyde and you're saying, but I only see one person. Yeah. For those of you who are wondering where Hyde's at right now, he's up in Washington, actually working a few different gigs, and I had to stay down here and be all by myself. Aww. And that's okay, because now I get to make this video for you guys. Item number one, this precision kit. So I know with having gimbals, cameras, tripods, light stands, stands for gimbals, all kinds of things, having something like this is definitely saving my butt. This thing has 42 different tools in it. So you're pretty much gonna find most of what you need in this little thing. And I think I might've spent like five to $10 for something like this, but honestly, I've used this more times than I can count. Item two, mounting options. So I couldn't tell you guys how many times these have saved my butt. Most of my tripods, my monopod, and my gimbal all use these Manfrotto plates. And I do have one tripod that does use this mount. I keep it around anyways, just in case. Sometimes I'll take different bags at different gigs. So I keep one or two of these in each bag. And we've got these cool guys. I'm not exactly too sure where they came from. I do think when I bought some flashes, I think these usually come with the flash. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll take something like this right here. And I can mount a monitor on it, an audio recorder, or just something random. Tighten that sucker up real quick. And there we go, we can mount whatever we want on it. I've got different ones. I don't know exactly where these all came from. I've collected them over the past few years. Here's another one that's got a ball head on it so I can move that around. Here's one to where I can mount it to, to a light stand. I can mount a monitor to the tripod. So there's a lot of uses I can get out of these. Item three, cleaning supplies. I don't know how many times I've showed them to a wedding. I pull out a lens, maybe I haven't used it in a while, and it's pretty dirty. Now I'm pretty bad about taking my shirt and cleaning it. I know you're not supposed to do that with lenses. I'm not really too worried about it. I'm usually pretty careful when I do it, but having fresh microfiber wipes definitely does help. Whether you realize it or not, your shirt isn't clean. It's actually pretty dirty. There's oils, fabric softeners, you know, food from when you ate earlier. There's a lot of junk on your shirt. So it's always best to have a fresh microfiber cloth. There's a couple in there that I've used on multiple occasions and I'll reuse them and reuse them. But typically after three or four uses, I'll throw them away and I'll bust out a new one of these, throw a new one or a couple in the bag. I know a lot of times when you buy accessories, these come included just randomly. So I, I collect these and I just put one in each bag that I have and I'm always covered. And I've got this, I call it a cleaning pen. I don't know the exact name for it. It's nice to have in your bag just in case. And I have sensor cleaning solution. I don't know actually where my sensor cleaning swabs are at this moment, but I usually keep a couple of those in the bag as well. In case I do show up to a gig, I have a dirty sensor. I need to get it clean. There we go. Item number four, lens caps and body caps. So I typically try to keep extra lens caps and body caps in my camera bags. Lens caps, not so much. I never think to buy these. I actually lost one to my 35 millimeter not too long ago. When I order an extra lens cap, I'm gonna be ordering two of them so I can keep one in the camera bag. Because that's not a cheap lens. So I definitely wanna try to take care of it. I've got loads of back caps for my lenses. Having extra one of these around, sometimes when I'm working with Hyde and he loses a body cap, which are probably all right here, we're pretty much using the same kind of lenses anyway, so I can just hand him an extra one of mine. And we know his lens is protected too. Item number five, tape. So as a videographer, if you're working on set, you've got light stands, cords, anything like that, definitely need to get some gaff tape. Not that expensive. I probably spent anywhere from 10 to $20 for this whole roll. Picked up an orange one too, because orange is my favorite color. And I'll actually use this to label my gear bags. So I've got it on my camera bag, my accessory bag, my tubs for my lights, my Pelican case, and more. So love having this double-sided tape you never know when you need to hang something up on the wall obviously you're not going to hang gear or anything but you never know when you can use something like this some electrical tape i don't think honestly i don't think i've actually had to use this necessarily but i know the gaff tape does work well so that's what i usually end up using i have this in the backup and i'm sure eventually one day i'll need it item number six clamps 
So I've actually needed these clamps more than I can think of. I have these metal ones and they work really good. They're really strong. I bought these from a hardware store for probably 50 cents each, something like that. Every so often I need to hang up a backdrop or just get something clamped down. This has always been super helpful with that. I do like these plastic ones a little bit more. I know with these metal ones, these little plastic tips usually come off quite often and I'm losing them all the time. So we've got this exposed metal. I really don't like something with this much pressure to be clamping expensive gear together. So I typically stick with these plastic ones. Item number seven, memory cards. So I try to keep an extra five to 10 memory cards, depending on what gig I'm working. If I'm doing a quick portrait session, I typically only need two memory cards. In case one fails, I have a backup. Now I went out and I bought this case. It's supposed to be a waterproof case. Honestly though, I'm not too much of a fan. When you take these memory cards in and out, it's such a tight fit, the lock piece. I've had a few of those break on my memory cards. So I don't like to really carry this thing around. What I'll do instead is I'll toss them in something like this. I bought this at Walmart for like 88 cents. It was under a buck. So I've got like three or four of these in my camera bag with different accessories. This one, I keep extra memory cards in. So I've got micro SD and I can just pop it in there. I'm good. As far as memory cards being used, I won't throw them back in here. I'll end up putting those back in here. So if the lock tab does break, I don't have to worry about writing to the card. Stuff's already been written on there. We're good to go. Item number eight double A batteries. So I always, always, always make sure I have an extra set of double A batteries. You can never really have too many double A batteries. My microphones take them, my audio recorders take them, having extra handy and making sure they're charged up. And speaking of batteries, I know I'm shooting on the A7S right now and the batteries for these cameras are awful. And these batteries are already pretty old. So the battery life's probably not the best on them anymore. So I always keep around 10 of these in my bag. I keep these in my bag as well. So I know a few of my triggers for my uh, my flashes and my strobes take these batteries. And I bought one and one of the triggers ended up dying. So I had to go back and buy another one. And honestly, I hated buying these batteries. I always forget what kind of batteries they are. So I went ahead and I bought a pack of like three. So I keep two extras in my bag. And really quick story. In our last video, you guys saw we shot a music video and the colored lights, we have a remote. They're actually the lights you see behind me right now. But there is this remote and I was like, oh man, it wasn't working. Wouldn't work. I kept trying different things. I thought the, the lights weren't working on the set we were shooting in. And so I opened it up. If I can figure out how to open it up. Oh, there we go. So I opened it up and I was like, oh sweet. I think I have those batteries kept on me. And so I looked and I had these on me and they were not the right batteries. So I had to leave set, go to the store. There was a Walgreens like a quarter of a mile away. So we didn't have to leave for that long. We got there and back in like 10 minutes. But when you're shooting by yourself and you're on a schedule, definitely don't have time for that. It won't focus. Just playing with you. Item number nine, Tide Pen. So when I first started doing photography, I was actually trying to build my portfolio. I asked a local group of photographers if I could just tag along to a wedding, do some stuff for my portfolio and gain some experience. We were working the wedding that day and I know I was with the groomsmen. I was getting shots with them. And all of a sudden the photographer comes over and she's like, hey, the bride just spilled red wine on her dress and the ceremony hadn't even started yet. So the photographer comes out, whips one of these bad boys out, hands it to the bride and saves the day. Item number 10, this little bendy tripod thingy. I don't even know what you call it, but I bought this for like 10 bucks off Amazon, something like that. Sometimes I need a low shot. So I use something like this so I can spread it out. There we go. I can put my camera on here. Right now I'm using a monitor, so it's right here. And I actually had it mounted on this before the video and I was like, crap, I was really gonna use that for the video. I ended up finding my tripod legs for my gimbal. So use that instead. Cause I really wanted to show you guys this. I mean, I don't know why I'm fascinated by this. I know they have more expensive ones. A lot of people use them for vlogging and stuff. But I know a lot of times, you know, you get in awkward situations. You want to put your camera there. You want stability. The camera's not going to sit straight. Your tripod's too freaking big to fit in the certain places. So something like this definitely comes in handy when you want to get in those tight spots, low angles, or if you just even want to walk around with the camera. It's not the most stable thing. Definitely helps bring some stability. So I know I said it was 10 items, but I think I can give you guys a few more that I like to keep in my bag. Card reader. Now this one is a little outdated, still has the headphone jack on it. And a lot of phones nowadays don't even come with a headphone jack, or at least I know the iPhones don't. I know I have this little, what do they call it? The dongle, such a weird name. For pretty much 95% of my gigs, the balance for that gig is paid off before I even show up to it. But I can plug it into here and book future gigs, accept tips or anything like that. I think the last time I actually used this was last year. I worked a military ball and each person was responsible for purchasing photos if they wanted to. So having 
having this on me definitely saved me a lot in processing fees. Hair ties. Hair ties can be a videographer's best friend. I know a lot of times, especially with the tripods that I work, I don't really do too much movement with them. It can jerk around a little bit here and there. So having a hair tie is a good little trick to help relieve that tension and give you more fluid movements. So I do keep extra one of these, plus my hair is a little longer, so I'll pop one in my hair. I just have them around just in case. And my last item, Business cards. When I first started out, made a set of business cards. I think we all do when we first start out. We're all excited about our business. We wanna share with everybody. We build a website, we start a Facebook. So I ordered a set of like 500 the first time I ordered them. I ran out and I was like, oh, you know, business is okay. I don't really need to pass out too many business cards. Nobody really asked for them too much anyways. When I would deliver USBs or prints or anything to clients, I would always start wearing like five business cards. I've got a lot of clients that way. Then for the longest time, I kept putting off ordering business cards and I put it off and I put it off because I feel like people really didn't ask for them too much. Everything was going digital, didn't have to worry about it. Then out of nowhere, everybody just started asking for my business cards. So I ordered a set, keep them in my backpack that I carry in my bag. And I'll keep some extras in a Pelican case that I use to carry some of my gear as well. That's some of the random things that I like to carry in my camera bag. Of course, they're not all in one bag, but I do keep them in different bags. So yeah, these are 10, well, technically 12 different items I keep in my camera bag just in case. And over the years, I've collected a lot of items. If you guys have noticed, a lot of these items are just, they're just tiny little items. They don't take up that much space. I actually have an extra bag that I store a lot of these items in and it's my just in case bag. Cause you never know. It's good to have it just in case. All right, so I just wanna thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys liked what you saw, give it a thumbs up, subscribe while you're at it, ring the bell. So if you guys use any of these, or maybe you have some items I didn't think of, leave a comment below and let me know, all right? I think that's it. Bye. Oh, that made a weird noise. Huh. I'm not doing that again. Joseph, come home. I don't like doing YouTube videos without you.